So um, I'll get that organized. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Scripture Reflections, Robertson Wesley United Church. My name is Reverend Karen Bridges, and it's always a great blessing to be with you all as we reflect on the scriptures for the coming week. The way we do this is that we have a group of people that meet regularly who are on Zoom. Um, so if you hear voices, that's where it's coming from. If you're joining us live from Facebook, I hope that you will consider letting us know that you are there, sending us a message, answering the questions as we go through. So we use the tradition of Lexio Divina as a way of exploring the scriptures in a deeper way. And so we'll read through the scripture three times. Hello, Rosemary. Um, we'll read through it three times, and then uh, after each time, we spend some time in silent reflection, and then I will open it up to discussion. So today we uh, we will start because I remember this time by first lighting the candle. I almost forgot that. Now <sighs> we light the candle to help us prepare our hearts and minds to hearing the words in scripture, the messages from Jesus, from God, and from the Holy Spirit. We have a, a Sabbath prayer. Hello, Laura. We have a Sabbath prayer that we use um, as well, and I will try and show it to the, the cameras and we'll read it backwards together. <laughs> so. Let us unite our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God of all creation, we offer you our thanksgiving for a time rich with connections among each other and with you. We thank you for moments when we have experienced what it is to be united, even in our differences. Help us to grow as a listening, discerning, learning people. Help us to give up patterns and structures that enslave us and others. Help us to acknowledge our fear and lean into your hope and your courage. Help us to grow in our trust in each other and in your spirit. Fill us with your grace and with your wisdom, with your patience and with your love. Propel us into your future, rooted in the richness of our past. In Christ we pray. Amen. So I will let you on Zoom know that I we have Rosemary with us on Facebook along with Laura. Laura decided to sit on her deck today, so she's join, joining us from the sunny deck. So today we are going to look at Psalm 31. In the lectionary, it skips out the middle passage or middle verses of it, but we are not going to do that. We're going to read through the whole thing. And so as I read through it the first time, I invite you to pay attention to how this psalm, how these words make you feel. Try and situate yourself in the place of the psalm writer if you are able. And so we are reading Psalm. Hi, Shy. Oh, it's great to see you. Um, and welcome to Sarah. And who else has joined us? Felicia and Jane. So we're reading Psalm 31. Psalm 31 today. It says, In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me and rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me. O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. 
I will exult and rejoice in your steadfast love. Because you have seen my affliction, you have taken heed of my adversities and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I've become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to Sheol. Let the lying lips be stilled that speak insolent against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you. In the sight of everyone, in the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter with contentious tongues, from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for God has wondrously shown God's steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you, God's servants. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. So let's take some time of silence as we reflect on how these words make us feel.
We've been reading Psalm 31, and I wonder, after hearing this for the first time, what were the feelings that were evoked for you? How did this make you feel, or what feelings arose? Brian. Um, first of all, Karen, of course it did. Uh, I would like to read the chapter, or verse 1, from the King James Version. It's a little different. It just says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. There's a bit of a change there. Mm -hmm. And so it started me thinking, because I think this psalm is very personal. And then about, I'm very conscious these days of the aging, because I am aging, as we all are. But in terms of this virus, I am supposedly an easy victim. Hmm. I'm 69. I've had a heart attack. I've had pneumonia all in the last 10 years. So I think about these things and I'm thinking about um, verse 12 and 13 in particular. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. And I, it makes me think of the people in these care homes. And those people know there, in general, there is one way out of those homes, and it ain't vertical. And I took care of my mom for five years in one of them. I would go there almost every single day and spend as my, I would try to spend two hours with her. But it was obvious to me that many people have no visitors in these homes. And really, they are parked there. And they are parked there to die. And now we're in this um, pandemic where people in those homes are dying left, right, center. Just makes me amazingly sad. And um, I think it's so important that I've put my faith in God uh, to help me, I guess I would say, as I grow older hmm. and more vulnerable. Thanks, Brian. How else does this make people feel as they listen to this the first time? And feel free on Facebook to write your answers in the comment area if you'd like. Any others? Yes, I felt a sense of security uh, from the, the sense of a rock, somebody stable to... Um, I didn't get the same sense with uh, Brian did. I actually felt I don't relate to this. Like, I, I think I don't have... I haven't spent my years with grief. I haven't spent my life sighing. Uh, my bones are could be not being consumed. Uh, okay, <laughs> this ain't me. Fair enough. So I just didn't feel like I fit in too good. Okay. Uh, I kind of um, blanked out, you know, right over there, <laughs> most of it, because my brain went right to the very last verse. That's what what I actually heard. The rest of it sort of went, oh, I can't deal with it anymore. There's too much going on. There's too many deaths. Brian's absolutely correct. We've created death homes. Um, but I went to 24, which is be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Because I couldn't deal with it. Good. Yeah. Other feelings out there? Um, I think I'm on. Yeah, you are. 
Okay. Hi, Jane. Um, hi, it's Jane. Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, sorry, I was a bit late. Um, so I was struggling. I didn't know the verse, so, but anyway, I, thank you for saying what it was again. Uh, there's the one, be merciful for me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. Um, I, well, I'm not in distress right now, but I remember the times when I was, and I really relied on God, kind of called out to God and said, help. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, and I thought, you know, you've not handed me over the enemy. So I feel, I do feel a sense of calm. It's, um, it's like being calmed and being, uh, trying to think of the word, encouraged, I think. But, you know, just believe and, you know, and trust. And um, so I feel that sense of, yeah, I feel hope. I feel hope whether I'm feeling like I'm living or close to dying. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to that end of life where I am closer to dying. So I need to think about it, and I need to trust in God. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Any other feelings before we read through it a second time that people would like to share? I, what I thought about was I just felt throughout it, it, I just felt prayerful. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Um, I, I felt a lot of different things depending on what we're reading. And, and um, what's standing out right now is verse 14, um, 15 and 16. But I trust in you, O God, Lord. I say you are my God. My, time, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies. And from those who persecute me, let me let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. And I find sometimes that my time is, although all time technically, I guess, is God. Sometimes my time isn't really focused on God. It's focused on other things that are more distraction than they're not necessarily idols, but they're a distraction from from God. So okay. that's kind of hitting me the most with with the Psalm 31 today. I think the feelings that were sticking out for me was the, the sense of release, um, of kind of being exhausted and just kind of letting go of everything at once. So this time, and, and some of you have already started to do this a little bit, but the second time through, if you were reading Psalm 31, for those of you who have just joined us, um, focus on what word or phrase is catching your attention and try not to overthink it. Just see which words or phrases stick in your mind for this time. In you, O oh Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me and rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love because you have seen my afflictions. You have taken heed of my adversaries and have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet on a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street 
flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to shoal. Let the lying lips be stilled that speak insolent against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for God has wondrously shown God's steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you God's saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts hauntily. Be strong and let your heart take courage all you who wait for the Lord. So we'll take some time and silent reflection. Which word or phrase is catching your attention? We're reading Psalm 31 today. So we'll spend some time reflecting on what word or phrase caught our attention.
So in Psalm 31, what word or phrase was reaching out to you today? Yes, Brian. Okay, I'll jump in if no one else will. Um, I'm thinking verse 17. Again, in the King James Version, it's a little bit different. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. It's I who can feel ashamed. More than someone shaming me, I feel. I can shame myself. Feeling ashamed is not a good thing. It doesn't feel good. And further, I think this is about, don't let me be ashamed in my faith, for I have called upon thee. I must take responsibility for what I'm doing including my journey in my faith. It's my choice. I have called upon God to lead me. And for the most part, I mean, towards then the end of this home, it's so beautiful. But to me, there's something in that, the beginning of that verse that is about me taking responsibility because I have called upon God to lead me. Nice. Thank you. I see Laura has added that uh, she felt the same as Jane in the first round. She felt peace. Um, and she said that the phrase or words that are catching her attention is how abundant is your goodness? Anyone else? I really like 16, the one before Brian, Brian's, which is, let your face shine upon your servant, save me in your steadfast love. Mm -hmm. And I just like, shine really caught my attention. And I thought that's, yeah, I need, I need, I need that shine. Um, and of course, there's lots of little songs that come up that use the word shine. So all kinds of little melodies popped in my head. Nice. as well but I really like that shine your face upon me just put the spotlight I can handle it <laughs> <laughs> that's great thank you Sarah I guess I went with the um the first verse and I've got the King version version as well and do not put my trust let me never be ashamed deliver me in thy righteousness which meant to me that this is how God created me and, and I'm to be this is what Thank you. Uh, the one that stood out to me is uh, verse 7. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. And, um, you know, I wrote down, uh, I have suffered in the past due to my own poor choices. And though I may not have known it at the time, God was with me. When I asked for help, I received it and felt God knew exactly where I was at. And, and, and when I read that verse, I just felt a really deep sense of gratitude. Lovely. Thank you. I, may I revise what I said? I said, let God's spotlight shine. What I was actually thinking was heat lamp. Okay. You know how you put a heat lamp on little chicks or you put a heat lamp on yeah. on piglets when they're mm -hmm. newborn and you want to give them extra warmth to make sure they're sustained and that they're going to survive that's what i was thinking about it's a okay. heat lamp thanks that's a wonderful memory i remember having little chickens when i was a child I used to hold them oh that was wonderful memory <laughs> anyone else thanks, sir. um i took two that i thought were sort of related to one another, number five and 15. So number five is it to your hand, I commit my spirit. And 15 is my times are in your hand. 
And I thought there's, there's so many things that I do not control. And, and just having that faith, faith in God being there. Nice. Mm -hmm. I guess one of the other verses that um, kind of spoke to me a bit more was um, 21. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a besieged city. So I, I don't, I haven't really been in a besieged city. We're on lockdown, but really, you know, it's not like we're in Syria or somewhere. But sometimes there's difficult times for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and God's love shows for that somehow. Sometimes, you know, we probably put like five pairs of sunglasses on, so it's really hard to see, but um, we're blinders, like in a horse, but uh, God's always there. And uh, sometimes it's pretty amazing how his love shows through. It's, it's so inspiring and uplifting and so many other things. So even through really hard times, you'll see this beautiful thing. Um, like now people are dying, but there's also people that are being born and people have found these really creative, amazing ways to spend their time. And, and people are more stressed than I usually see them, but you know, I've gone for walks and stuff and the buds are coming out on the trees and people are showing their little seedlings and they're not so little seedlings of tomato plants that they started probably in February. And, um, it's, it's pretty neat to see that um, mm -hmm. spring always seems to be like a time of revival of really amazingly different weather. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, um, I find hope in that and, and, you know, it's not always big fancy miracles that God shows, but sometimes it's, the everyday things that are pretty amazing, you know, whether it's the cake that turned out right or the coffee that just seemed extra special that morning, um, or the cat that says hello when <laughs> you didn't want him to, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. That's great. Yeah, the line that caught my attention was, be gracious to me, oh God, and I think in some ways, uh, I guess what caught my attention about it is, I, I think that the psalmist isn't really... I mean, it's kind of asking God, but really is probably asking themselves to be more gracious to themselves. Um, sometimes we're harder on ourselves than, than God would ever be. So um, maybe asking for that, that compassion, the, the, the gentle approach, maybe not the challenging approach from God. Like, don't kick me in the butt, just maybe give me a nice little hug and a little encouragement right now. Um, <laughs> was the one that was catching my attention today. <laughs> Might be a reminder for me than anything um in this time because i like to challenge so maybe it's time to be gentle and compassionate and gracious to everyone we're going to read through psalm 31 hello tanya we're going to read through psalm 31 another time this time we are looking for what message or what wisdom do these words does this writer have for us today in our time and place together as you listen through, listen to, to think what message this has for our faith community. It's Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me and rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me and a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden from me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. You hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will exalt and rejoice in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have taken heed of my adversaries and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. 
My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. For I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Do not let me be put to shame, O Lord, for I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go dumbfounded to shoal. Let the lying lips be stilled that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness that you have laid up for those who fear you and accomplished for those who take refuge in you in the sight of everyone. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from human plots. You hold them safe under your shelter from contentious tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for God has wondrously shown God's steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you God's saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. What message? What words of wisdom does it say to us in our time and place today? We'll spend some time in silent reflection.
what are these words saying to us today? What message does it have to us as a faith community, do you think? I'm focusing it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jane. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm referring to um, verse 7 again. <clears throat> I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. Uh, and, I thought, and I've written down, how much do I really rejoice in God's love? And I'll be honest, I feel really uncomfortable with that challenge. I kind of picture the people going around saying, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <laughs> I just kind of, I cringe. Um, but, but at the same time, like, that's a challenge to me. And, and I was thinking, I need to stop the busyness. <clears throat> and I love this pandemic for that, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, because then I spend some time counting my blessings and being grateful. I also have something here right in the Bible that um, says, like it's referring to verses 1 to 8, the place of safety from the enemy is a spacious place, and God puts us there. He knows there are times we need our space, but even more important, he wants us to be open to God, to make space in our schedules and in our souls. Um, the question is, will we quickly fill up the space with fear, worry, busyness, and compulsive behavior, or will we truly make room for him? So it's kind of nice that I actually, what my thoughts were, were kind of in the line. That's that. great. Arlene, I'm going to come to you in just a second. Laura's written on Facebook, and I just don't want to lose it. Um, Laura said, in the face of our enemy today, COVID-19, as we have grief and sorrow amongst our people throughout the world, God is shining on us and through us with steadfast love, through each of us with one another. We aren't alone. Thanks for that, Laura. Arlene, what were you contemplating? I was just going to say, the one that I'm taking is, I took the, the very last one, the, the message, be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope uh, in, the, in, the, in the Lord. So to be optimistic, to have courage, and we'll get through. Thanks. That's kind of the message I've got. Generally with these, that's yeah, the main message, kind of at coming at the end, so. Sometimes, yeah. Brian? Well, I'm, I'm going with Jane because uh, this time has been like a retreat in many ways. And it's, I think it's given me the opportunity to um, really explore, maybe in a different way, my relationship with God, my joy in God, and um, the joy I find in my relationship with my God. Uh, you know, it, it's like when you mentioned, Jane, about the nervousness, the embarrassment, whatever of those who may go around, praise God. But on the other hand, why not? Yeah. yeah. Why not? If one feels that. And I feel like I'm a loner. I can spend a lot of time alone. In, and I have a very public life. But I find my time alone is really important to me. And 
and I love it when Sunday comes and I can go to church and join other people in saying praise God that that is part of the rejoicing of the service I think and it's um the more I get into exploring my faith and the journey I'm on, because I'm on, each of us is a person, right? And we're each on our personal journey, but it's really important um, to be able to gather with other people and say, praise God. Yeah, it's true. Thank you. I actually had another thing. I'm reading a book right now by Karen Armstrong, and it's a history of Jerusalem. And it's always interesting when I read things like The Rock and The Fortress. I had no idea that Jerusalem had been invaded and conquered so many times. It was, a, it was a particular Jewish city, not for all Jewish people, was it the center. Then it became a Christian city. Then it becomes a Muslim city. And in each one, the rock is really important, I've learned. I had no idea what it really meant, the rock it's all the way through the Bible, right? And for David, I mean, this is a song of David. Um, I mean, he's in it, boy. I mean, he was a conqueror. <laughs> and so it's interesting as I learn more how I'm getting to have more layers of meaning. Fine. That's just of interest. But I still think in this psalm, the personal, is really important. Mm -hmm. Any others like to share? A couple of the thoughts that I have um, that some, sometimes, and especially in the current context, we feel distressed or we feel abandoned by our friends and family and God and so on. And, and in those times, it seems we're very vulnerable to um, listening to voices that could lead us down a very negative pathway. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, for me, it's, uh, good to know that others have those kinds of feelings and then ending with the be strong and be courageous and know that God is there. Yeah. Sarah? I, I think there's a piece missing for me. Um, this feels like we're done. We got it. God's with us. It's okay. Hang in there. And um, for me, this isn't over. And it won't be like Brian. I'm vulnerable. And this will not be over for me for yeah. another year or until there's a vaccine. Yeah. And I am. Um, wishing there was another, okay. I wish there was another psalm that they had chosen that said, be persistent and hang in there um, because this is not, this is going to be 40 years in the wilderness and you will be bitching and complaining and you will backslide and you will, you know, do all the things that the Israelites did in the, in the desert. Um, I would like to see some readings from that and, and remind, so I can remind myself that this is not 
although I need to trust and have faith, this is not short term. I need to be prepared for the long haul. Mm -hmm. I agree it would be a long haul, but I don't think hopefully quite 40 years before they get the vaccine figured out. <laughs> But, but um, it'll still feel like 40 years, right? Well, and, it, and who says the Israelites? 40 years is just a long period of time. Yeah. It's, uh, what, I what you say, Karen, how do you call it? Just a biblical number that represents a long period of time. What you're saying, Sarah, is really important. I think it's important to recognize um, that each of us, as a person can have our own um, private thoughts on what we're all going through, that we aren't going through it exactly the same. And I think it's important to recognize that some people today, what we're all going through collectively may be more vulnerable than others and to, in a sense, um, honor that vulnerability. Like I think going back again to these care homes and thinking about how indigenous people respect their elders, the importance of the elders in the culture and I feel in many ways the way elders are treated in that culture is almost the opposite of how elders are treated in our culture. I think people are fine until each of us reaches a point of vulnerability, whatever that may be. And I'm thinking now of real old age. And uh, I mean, I was acutely aware in the years going to where my mom lived. I go, this is a ticking time bomb. If the flu came, it went through that place rapidly. And this was a, considered a good home. And you would see people park there with no dignity whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I guess I feel in that, in that this has gone from one side of our country to the other. There's kind of a national, um, I think there's a greater awareness nationally of what we are doing to our most vulnerable peoples. Mm -hmm. It's not a pretty picture. No, it's not. And we must take responsibility for it mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. You know? And uh, so I respect what you say, Sarah, in terms of vulnerability. Um, you know, I look at those pictures on the news where there is a person in the home on one side of the glass window and the one on the other, and they're waving to each other. I mean, I can remember waving to my mother over and over and over. It breaks my heart. I don't like those images. I think they are, as Canadians, I don't think we should feel proud of how we're treating our most vulnerable elders which elders are spoken about throughout the Bible too. I think we need, I think it's showing us we have some work to do. It's serious. Absolutely. It's never, never ending. And it's something we're all, we're all in this together. And as you say, every single one of us is, is coming from a different place. Um, some of us have had previous traumas where this is just adding on to that pressure as well. So, um, yeah, we all deal with things in a different way. Um, Hello, Shirley. I, I will give to you, Sarah, the scripture that speaks to me in these times, um, just so that you don't feel you're leaving here with no, 
you know, words of wisdom. So this one, even though we've been reading Psalm 31, I'm going to end with one verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 12, <laughs> which is rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. <laughs> yeah. So with that, we will end with the prayer that we have all learned together um, as a way of closure coming to the end of our time, knowing that there will be another scripture on Sunday that will pair with this psalmist as well. But um, let's join together in the Lord's Prayer in whatever language and words that works for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to say farewell to our Facebook friends. If the Zoom friends want to have a little chat afterwards, feel free to do that. So goodbye, friends. Hello to all of you who have joined us. It was really nice to see you all today. Bye.